Apple's personal assistant Siri is light years behind chatbots like ChatGPT and Gemini. It has officially become the basic bitch of artificial intelligence. Got your results back. And, uh, uh, I'm sorry, but the test was positive. You're a basic bitch. But that will soon change once the new Siri 2.0 gets released later this year. And then it can finally transform from being the basic bitch to Einstein overnight. I agree. Now, do you want to find out what some Siri 2.0 features might look like and what Apple phones it will be supported on? Well, by the end of this video, you'll learn all about that and more. Plus, you'll find out why Tim Cook had a bipolar moment recently. For most of 2023, Apple and Tim Cook avoided saying the words AI or artificial intelligence. In fact, in Apple's last WDC keynote, AI was never even mentioned at all. And this is in stark contrast to just about every other company in the United States. Thousands of companies have been throwing out the words AI like some magic elixir, an elixir to make their crappy products seem extraordinary. It's like slapping an AI decal on a rusted 1990s minivan and selling it as a Lambo. But that's the opposite of what Apple did in 2023. They fought against the AI hype train for almost a full year, but that changed quickly. It first started with Apple killing its electric car project, Titan and moving all of those employees to its generative AI division. Then at Apple's recent shareholder meeting, Tim Cook apparently turned bipolar. He did a 180 degree turn and went from never talking about AI to becoming an AI cult prophet, one who seemingly found the magic pill to make you live forever. He said Apple would be investing significantly in artificial intelligence, and he believes that the technology allows for incredible breakthrough potential. He went on to say, later this year, I look forward to sharing with you the ways we will break new ground in generative AI, another technology we believe can redefine the future. So obviously, Cook had a change of heart. But why? Well, maybe because ChatGPT is making Apple Surrey look like a kid's play toy. Or maybe it's due to the iPhone's falling sales numbers. No one really knows. But we do know Cook changed his mind. He must have known something transformative needed to happen with Apple in order to catch up with companies like OpenAI. I mean, look at some of these embarrassing Surrey examples. Hey Siri, sing for me. Okay, if you insist, I could wall away the hours, conferring with the flowers, consulting with the rain, and my head I'd be scratching, while my thoughts were busy hatching, if I only had a... Hey, wait a second. Sing for me. Oh my darling, oh my darling, oh my darling friend of mine, I'd have to search the web forever to find a heart as sweet as thine. Hey Siri. Beatbox. Here's one I've been practicing. Boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots. I can do this all day. Or this one. Clearly, a change with Siri and Apple needs to happen. The good news is that Apple, out of just about any U.S. company, is positioned the best to use AI to its advantage and consequently make Siri better. You see, since 2010, Apple has been making their own custom chips for iPhones and Macs. And by doing this, it allows them to be in control of their own destiny. They're not at the whim of any other AI chip company, which is a great thing since so many of them have a huge backorder log. The most recent iPhone, iPhone 15, has an A17 chip that includes a natural processing unit or NPU and can handle 35 trillion operations per second. It's a perfect architecture for handling on-device AI. That means when you talk to Siri 2.0, your personal data won't have to go to the cloud like it does with ChatGPT. Instead, it will stay on the device. A huge privacy win, something Apple prides itself in. On top of that, Apple has been secretly working on their very own AI models, Ajax, Ferret, and MGIE, and all of those can be incorporated into future iPhones in one way or the other. And they can be used with Siri. 
Not only that, but Apple has acquired 32 AI companies in 2023 and has over 1.5 billion iPhones on the market. You can't ask for any better setup to make Surrey 2.0 and AI in general transformative on future iPhones. So how is this going to make Surrey not a clown show anymore and make it actually feel like you're talking with ChatGPT? According to the co-founder of Surrey, Dag Kitloss, Apple is going to do something monumental with Surrey 2.0. He said that there was some reference in the chatter that Surrey will have a leap forward with Apple devices. He goes on to say, I would expect that first, followed by incredible progress over the next few years. In another tweet, he says, Surrey will accelerate and become a real force in the AI arena. Apple is uniquely positioned to enable useful and unexpected LLM use cases. Basically, DAG expects Apple to wow everyone when they supposedly release Surrey 2.0 at WWDC this summer. A wow factor that could be comparable to the days when the first iPhone was announced 17 years ago. And here it is. In practice, this could mean a lot of things for yourself and iPhone users in general. Surrey 2.0 will be really smart. Think ChatGPT like smarts. Smart like Einstein. Smart like Isaac Newton. It might just be so smart that Apple will require a monthly subscription to use it. That's the rumor at least. Surrey 2.0 might allow you to do things like write an engaging tweet based on what you tell it and it will then tweet it for you. Make reservations for you at your favorite Mexican restaurant with just your voice. Summarize notes from your favorite note-taking app and read it aloud to you. Hold a conversation with you as if you were talking to your best friend. Pull up all the photos of your child from the last two years, but only if they're smiling in them. Change the voice of Siri to anyone you'd like, even a family member or a friend. Transfer screenshots from your iPhone to your MacBook Pro with a simple voice prompt. Those are just some of the features that might be released with the newest version of Surrey. The only crazy thing is that Apple might only feature Surrey 2.0 in their newest iPhone 16 phones, forcing users to buy a new phone if they want to use Surrey. That's the current speculation, at least. And it makes sense since iPhone sales have slumped lately. Just be prepared, though, when the announcement is made this summer and get your piggy bank ready. Because if Apple delivers another wow moment with Surrey 2.0, you might be the one sleeping outside the Apple store waiting for the iPhone 16 to be released. That's it for tonight. If you want to learn more about Apple software, check out my other vid, Ferret. Apple's multimodal chatbot no one is talking about. And if you found this video interesting, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and my free AI email newsletter at fry-ai.com forward slash subscribe. Have a great night. This is Ryan signing out. Take care.